Call to order the special board meeting of USD 464 for Monday, April 29th. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? A second. All favor raise your right hand. All right, is there a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. A second. All in favor, right hand. Michelle voted yes to. Um, all right, with that, we will move into tonight's presentation. Amber, are you the. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I don't know who on the district visioning team, Jake. Good evening, floor. everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for allowing us the opportunity to present the Visioning Committee's recommendation this evening. Second, I'd like to thank USD 464 Administration and DLR Group for seeking community input on this project and for their leadership and invaluable information provided during, throughout this process. Participants in this exercise were given the opportunity to tour both the East and West campuses and I feel confident in saying that everyone's eyes were opened to the need for solutions for our high school. Whether they have children currently enrolled in high school or they themselves attended the school years ago, many longtime residents were surprised and saddened by the reality of the deteriorated facilities. This process represents just the first step of many to identify solutions, which I hope will lead to a greater involvement of the community in general. Uh, to maintain our facilities and build upon the pride in our school district, our educators, and our community. Uh, all of us here uh, represent the visioning committee and uh, we're all active uh, and participatory in all of the visioning uh, committee meetings. And so I'd like to give them a moment to introduce themselves. I'm Carly Weatherford. I think I know almost everybody here. I have five kids, so I have two in the elementary school, two in the middle school, and one in the high school. So I definitely have a vested interest in this. My husband and I have been in the community almost 16 years. So. And hello, I'm Christina Lindholm, and my husband Jake and I have lived here a, a little bit over 13 years. We have a son that's in the middle school, he's a sixth grader, and our daughter is here at the elementary school in third grade. My name is Ryan Bruni, and my wife Nicole and I moved out here about five years ago. Uh, we have three children, uh, one of which is in the school system currently, and two future PEs. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jeremy Albert. My family and I have been here almost four years. Uh, I have one student in each building, so this is uh, the future for our family to be over. And I'm Jake Dale, uh, have been in the community for, I don't know, 14, 15 years. Uh, my wife is a special, special education uh, administrator for Lansing School District and has worked with the special ed students here within this district uh, several years ago. I currently have a high school uh, sophomore uh, and a fifth grader um, here at TES. So thank you again for having us. And we'll will point your attention up to the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the committee makeup here uh, consisted of 69 Tonganoxie USD 464 patrons. Uh, they include representatives from each school, business owners, and community patrons. And the process was uh, completed over a period of six meetings. In workshop one, we met to establish our guiding principles. In workshop two, we shared business building assessments, educational trends, and we established some options to pursue. In the third workshop, we discussed some options that were presented to us and determined what additional information was needed based on, uh, based on those options. Uh, in the fourth workshop, we started to really refine some of those options uh, as well as come up with a, a couple few suggestions or new suggestions rather. Uh, on the, in the fifth workshop, we studied a no tax increase option. Uh, the committee was very uh, cognizant of today's environment where um, sales tax, or not sales tax, property taxes are uh, almost a bad word. So we did look at that option. In the sixth workshop, we discussed survey results and finalized a recommendation to the Board of Education. 
In that first workshop, our guiding principles included number one, security. Uh, we identified several security in issues uh, with having the separated uh, campuses, uh, not just the students walking back and forth between East and West Campus, but also the amount of entrances at each of those buildings and the dangers that those pose. Uh, number two was modernization, uh, including a considerate layout, supportive of the educational model, and room for both growth in the, uh, in the student number and enrollment, but also for um, expansion later on. Uh, usability, community pride, flexibility, uh, I'm going to skip over fiscally responsible community spaces and again consider a layout were also added and the fiscally responsible was one that uh, that was very big in the committee's eyes and I think at the end of the whole exercise fiscally responsible meant more than just doing it inexpensively it meant more than just doing it for as little money as could be spent uh, we talked about putting a band-aid on or not wanting to put a band-aid on uh, on the solutions um, and so fiscally responsible was about doing things right and even if it cost more money than uh, than the cheapest option doing it right was more impossible or was more important and more responsible the options that we considered included do nothing uh, which of course would be zero dollars uh, minimal work to connect and repair the buildings, reconfigure versus new learn learning spaces, new competition gym, cafeteria, and community space, renovations of both the 2005 building and the West Campus, and we discussed moving the footprint to either the east or the west of the main east campus, and a partnership with the Recreation Commission. So in, uh, I think it was probably the fifth uh, workshop, we completed an exercise uh, here referenced as build a school, where we took the layout and we took all of the different options that had been presented to us, um, new learning centers, new gymnasium, uh, renovations to both of the, the buildings, and we started to piece together um, plans of what we felt as individual tables and groups, what they felt uh, was important in this whole project. We have two schemes. Um, at the end, we put them all up on the wall and people voted for them. We have the two highest vote getting schemes here. Scheme number one earned 14 out of 25 votes. And you can see there, I know it's kind of kind of hard to read and it's sideways, but uh, if you tilt your head at an <laughs> odd angle, you can, um, basically site improvements, um, code updates, support spaces, administration, and then new learning suites and performing arts classrooms were the bare minimum. Uh, this group uh, included the new uh, competition gym and social commons and a cafeteria, consolidating cafeterias into one, and then renovations for two-thirds of the West Campus for district office, and then uh, some renovations of, of the existing uh, space. This plan totaled 53.2 million, and the second plan, comes up. there we go, scheme two. Uh, earned 8 out of 25 votes and included many of the same items with a smaller amount for renovating the West Campus and totaled 51.3. So at the end of the day, uh, 22 out of 25 votes went to either of these two, uh, two plans and they, they're both very consistent um, in, in them. This is the, the main difference between the two. One of them included uh, renovating two-thirds of the West Building at a total cost of 5.5, and then 1.4 in refreshing the 2005 edition and renovating the existing gym. Whereas the other option was in, uh, 
renovating two thirds of the West Building for only two and a half million, and then a uh, 2005 refresh. So based on this whole process, um, we came to the conclusion to recommend base work at Tonganoxie High School totaling $46.4 million, which includes a new competition gym, uh, commons area, a consolidated cafeteria, a two-story learning center, and administrative offices you'll see in the purple just above the yellow two-story learning center. Now this plan here that you, you see includes building the two-story learning center uh, in the location of where the existing uh, classrooms currently are, the 1963 original building. Uh, after working with uh, the educators who also had a separate, uh, separate committee, they felt that, um, they felt, I'm gonna go forward once, they felt that this layout made more sense for their purposes, which is to build the learning suites uh, to the west of the existing um, 2005 edition, the Performing Arts Center, and the competition gym to the east where the 1963 original building is. So now let's go back here. Base work at Tonganoxie High School, totaling 46.4 million, includes consolidating the building, addresses the safety and security issues that we had identified in our core principles. All new classrooms, science labs, library and support spaces, a competition gym, consolidated cafeteria and kitchen, demolition of the church building, the metal building and part of the east building, and all site work. We felt throughout this process that the competition gym was necessary to complete our core principle of safety and security. As two gyms are required uh, for the school day, um, if we did not include this competition gym, students would still be going back and forth over to the West Campus gym. It also allows an opportunity for uh, the possibility of the West Campus gym um, to be used in some form or fashion by the Recreation Commission for the community's benefit. This is another layout, another view of uh, the proposed uh, layout of the, the building. And that includes the updates to the current gym as well, right? Yes. The sightline issues. And right, correct, okay. yeah. In addition to the base work of 46.4, the committee recommends uh, renovations totaling $5 million, uh, which would include light renovations to the 2005 uh, addition and corridors, including paint and floor repair, and updating the 2005 finishes, uh, as well as um, updating the gym stairs uh, for ADA compliance and uh, the light blue uh, around in the, the hallways uh, include no renovation with this. All of the red would be demolished as part of this plan. That's all of the uh, existing classrooms in the 1963 building and then the church building. The corridors do have light. Yeah, what's that? The corridors do have light. Corridors do have light. Corridors do have light refresh in the 2005 and the the one hallway in front of the gym. This renovation includes at the West Campus uh, space for a district activity center including administrative offices, professional development space, IT offices, and a Board of Education meeting room. Additionally, it opens up the possibility for space uh, for use by the Rec Commission including classrooms, office space, the gym for activities, and then also all needed code upgrades. So you can see on this next one, it's a little zoomed in picture of what all that work would entail. Uh, the orange represents the district offices uh, and renovations um, for that. And then the, the light pink around those includes a 
proposed walking track uh, for the community. Um, and then the, the light blue areas are uh, uh, proposed or possibly proposed for the rec commission use, including the gym. Again, this is the East Campus renovation plan um, in addition to that, that West Campus one. Am I going the wrong way? There you go. So, total. Base work at Tonganoxie High School, 46.4 million, and renovation work totaling 5 million for a total bond cost of 51.4 million is the recommendation of the community visioning team. This recommendation addresses safety and security concerns, all new classrooms, consolidates the building, provides a new appropriately sized competition gym, consolidates and updates the cafeteria and kitchen, provides for some community use spaces, appropriate district office space, and renovated West Campus space for possible rec commission use. The taxpayer analysis on 51.4 million includes a three mil, uh, three mil levy increase based on the medium Leavenworth County home value of 168.9. That increase would equal $4.85 a month uh, based on a $150,000 home, which is the number that we had worked on uh, on, the co on the visioning team, $4.31 a month, and on an annual basis, property taxes would increase 51.75 for that $150,000 home. During, uh, during this process, uh, DLR Group completed a survey of uh, vested and non-vested registered voters 626 of 4,154 people responded, totaling 15.1%. The question, if the plan required a property tax increase to complete, what level of monthly increase would you support on a $200,000 home? Of the respondents, 34.6 uh, answered that they do not support a tax increase at any level. But 65.4 said they would support some form of tax increase. 10.1 were supportive of more than $10 a month. 29.3 were supportive of 5 to 10, and 26 of less than 5. So this plan falls within uh, the, the majority of the respondents. This schedule uh, includes the pre-bond planning, which started in February and would continue until uh, through next month and uh, we'd recommend a bond referendum in September. And uh, assuming a successful bond campaign, design work beginning in September, running through April of 2020, and construction from May of 2020 to August of 2021. Anything you guys would like to add? I, we'd, we did talk about growth, um, and, and it's not mentioned here, uh, but this plan was, um, is sufficient to support eight, 800, 800 students, uh, which is currently, I believe, about 150 below where we're at now. We're about 650 uh, enrolled in the high school. So there is room for growth within that, but in addition to that, this layout supports expansion of the, the learning center there in the yellow, uh, supports expansion out to either to the back where those trees are located um, or potentially uh, could support further expansion further west, um, you know, encroaching upon the west campus building which you know, could, could have other, other uses. Vertical growth, as well. vertical growth as well. It could go from a two-story to a three-story building as well. So it does provide some, uh, um, some options for the future as well. Um, so we'd welcome any questions. All right. I think there should be a lot of questions. I know several have sat in some of this. Some people, I mean, 
were able to attend a lot of these meetings, but um, I guess we're here tonight to entertain and discuss the possible resolution to proceed on this project. I'm sure there's a lot of clarifying items. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything to start off with. In terms of how is the breakdown, I guess, dollar-wise for the rec part, and I don't know where we stand. I mean, we've had a lot of discussions, but I don't think we have a lot of stuff finalized in that arrangement. No. Was that, you know how many dollars that was? Yeah, I can tell you the dollars, it's about 1.2 million. Of the 51.2, or 51.4? And actually, it's 1.2 of the 5 million. Because the, the 5 million in renovations is what would be supporting the West Campus renovations. Um, so the, the 46.4 itself is, uh, or the 46.4 of the 51.4 is for the new learning spaces and the competition gym. How does that work? I mean, if we don't get an agreement worked out with them, how, how do we so, work that with the bond, I guess? So, that you have to meet with that plan that has West Campus in it. So, you have other rooms within that plan that right now would just be kind of shell spaces, extra space, those are gray. So, I would propose the blue spaces would be the same. You could not spend dollars on them right now and they could be for future use when you worked out something, whether it was with them or someone else, to use that space within the community. What's so then what do you do with the funding? Well, the, I think the funding, rather than being used for the blue spaces, would be used for the gray spaces, is that what you're saying? Well, it could be, you, you could reallocate it to another item on the list within the uh, bond planning process that we've been talking you can't once we go to the state and issue for, get approval for bonds. I mean, we're locked into that dollar amount up or down either way. I mean, right. there's really no change. The, the dollars are fungible in between different categories, right? You know, the state say, hey, you said five million here. It's a hard five million. You may say, well, we only did came in and we only spent four and a half million. That gives you five hundred thousand to reallocate to something else. So. I, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Um, okay, so I have two things. First of all, it's my understanding that a lot of this, I mean, this is the overall picture, right? So a lot of the fine details will be determined, you know, after we know if this is a real thing or not. After, you know, the vote, ha the state allocates the funds and the vote happens, and we know that this is a thing. So then, you know, if you want to, you know, you look at that floor plan and you make some changes, you still have that liberty to do that. So. I, and then also, while I've been on the school board, I, I don't know, help me verify if this is correct or not, but I think that what happened was from this building, there were some funds that the board, or you were on the board too, but the board voted to put that chunk of money back towards the payment, so we, right, so we paid off something a lot earlier, right? Is that, yes. that's possible? I think that's yes. what happened. So. Um, I guess that that is an another way that I look at it. So if you go to the state and you say we want, you know, $51.2 million and you get that and you go through the process and you go through all your fine details and then you decide that, you know, we only need 48, then you can take that extra money and you can use it to pay back early, right? The so, bond, which so you pay off off the back end. Or, I mean, well, so I mean, there's, a, there's a couple different nuances, and so really, you probably would not be making the decision at the board level until the end of the project. And I would just say that when you when you borrow when you, when you do a bond issue, those funds can be used for one or two things, and one is projects, and, and the, which are authorizing the ballot question. You'll notice the ballot question is a very broad question, right? So it provides the board a lot of flexibility to use those funds for a lot of different purposes within the school district. So that's one option. The other option would be is those funds would be going back to the bond and interest fund and use more for, for melody management initially. And then at some point in time when those bonds become prepayable, that's when you prepay them. 
But I guess my viewpoint of it is that it would be better. I mean, if you if you ask the state for the money and you get allotted that amount of money and then you go through it and it'd be better to have the money you need versus the opposite. You ask for too little and then you, you know, have to cut something out that would really be useful for education. No, I think it's, it's the first time for most all of us, I think, on all this and it's, <laughs> it's move, we've been moving pretty fast and that, and I know that the rec thing is a very promising option. It's just there's a lot of details that have worked out. I think it's not, it's not that no, no one, Anybody I've talked to doesn't want to do it. I think the concern is had for, uh, I mean, Drew and Stephanie and I met with the rec. It's just, if we do it, it's just kind of like the whole thing of doing the school. We don't want to do it halfway. We don't want to promise them something and then deliver say, yeah, they're part of this, and then we run out of money and we can't do it, or, or you know, we're just trying to figure out if, in order if the deal didn't get worked out because the cost was so much. Right. You know, what, what are we doing with that money? Are we being or, or we responsible? renovate that space and, and then they don't have the funding to staff it and to utilize it. Yes, before we actually make the trigger on those specific things in the process, we probably is when we need, I guess that's the question. There'll be a certain time when we have to really iron out the construction process. And at that time, we'd really need to know, I guess, if they're committed to that or if we need to go a different direction. I, I think that it would be smart of the district to look at that real estate as something that if we have the ability to lease it out and make an income off it, that's ideal. And that would be in the situation of the rec center. But you have to not look at it like that during this process. I think you have to look at it that we are going to build the space that is would work for the benefit of the district as we grow you know, if that, that is a gym and that is classroom. So the district looks at it as they invest in it as, as we grow, these are spaces that we're gonna invest in that at any point in time, our education environment and the district as a whole will benefit from having this real estate. And so if we know that the rec center right now is in, you know, is interested in utilizing it, that's fabulous, but you can't count on that. You can't never, you know, if somebody's renting from you, you can't count on that. So it would be, from a business sense, more ideal to look at it that as you invest in that space, this is something, you know, that all districts would benefit from. And then it's great that they're gonna, I think I'm restating what I already stated, but anyway, that happens. Well, is there, is there a, an ability to use some of that area? I don't know if the district does DEV classes or... Well, there's always those options. Any, yeah. Anything like that. So oh. then we would have, you know, some shelled out space at least right. in the future doing CNA classes um, at the high school level. I know Bonner does that. Or GED classes in the evening. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I, I think what Kai is saying has value in that we would rather have the money there and, and have it shelled out, kind of ready to go. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a multiple areas that we would be able to use it, e either during the day or the evening. You know, we, we Even for about ACT prep classes, well, there's, there's, offer those. There's a lot of different options. Yeah. You know, joining a little bit with, you know, KCK and mm -hmm. some of the things they can offer for us, we could fall okay. under some of those kinds of classes. Yes. But um, we have a lot of we have a lot of uses. We, we would lo use a lot of that area yeah. under our current <clears throat> plan. I would tell you that the idea of the rec center um, came, came along pretty early in the visioning team's process. Um, and by the end of it, I think, uh, I think most of us all recognized that, uh, that it would be nice to have but we certainly understand that it's not a guaranteed deal in this bond issue. That's why I kept reference, referencing it as a possibility. Um, absent that uh, coming to fruition, there's still an asset there um, and, and there are still needs in that space that, uh, that need to be addressed. Because, yeah, it houses all the technology, it will house all the technology, which I believe will be torn down because it's mm -hmm. currently an old church or something. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I know d just minus just office space, space that that will be in there too. Mm -hmm. 
my eyes are getting old and I can't read the rest. It's really great right now. Professional development space and some space for some um, outreach classes, mm -hmm. online classes. Adult education. Mm -hmm. um, we see multi-purpose rooms for you know for the professional mm -hmm. development meetings, mm -hmm. uh, all those. Any other questions, board members? I have several. I've um, been wait. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so parking, um, knowing that the rec is an option, and that we're at eighty percent utilization. Is that correct? We're at 800. With scheduling, that's with a teacher-centric type approach on the scheduling. Is that correct for 800? Um, it's as far as who's moving and how how you're handling right, managing all, that space. At at 800, um, they would still be some sharing spaces. Okay, but there is the possibility whether or not the district decides to go that route in the future if we need more. Yes. If the enrollment goes up, exceeds that uh, that number, we can go up to nine, almost a thousand, so right. 990. Yeah. So how does the parking align with that with regards to flexibility in the future, both at the 800 number and then if you were to take that same space and uh, rework the scheduling and the use of that space to accommodate up to 990. So the parking count that he's showing right now would accommodate the 800. Okay. There would probably have to be some restriping of potentially the back area of the lots to accommodate if you were to decide to go up to the closer to the 1,000. So, so that would then, would that require then finding an off-site spot for the buses? And I would so say no, there's, there's uh, more spots that are going to be Okay. Right now, he just kind of had it separated by use because so that back area's got a little bit of extra space also. We hadn't made a decision as to run the right. bowling station, so it has some extra space. He's got it striped out to like kind of maximum possibility. So there could be, I mean, so I think you have space on the site where you could accommodate for the 1,000 students. Okay. At what point where you got to that? So there, the, when you say space, is that paved space or space that could be paved? Space that could be paved in that, yeah. Okay. And does 1,000 students account for everybody driving? I don't know, do most freshmen here drive or? So Mr. Farrar could probably some. address that, I know. I'd say it's probably 50-50. It's more than you would think. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're all driving really big trucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, the, you mentioned the fueling, and is that is there an amount um, allocated for that? Yes. But so the location hasn't been defined yet. That's right. So right now we have 383000 in to relocate it. Okay. Is that the higher dollar option? Relocate the underground tanks or buy new tanks or do we not know yet? Take the underground tank out that's there and probably put a new one in somewhere else. Okay. If you would uh, save some dollars, about $150,000, $100,000 if you chose to just only remove it and not put one back on site. Okay. So this, this option gives you the flexibility to still make that determination as a district, which you want to do. Okay. So for phasing, I, I really like for the school itself how we end up with this image, an athletic wing, an arts um, center section, and then students. It, it, for security, I really like the fact that you can have athletic events on one side, basically lock off the rest of the school and you can keep that. Um, it also, I, I like how it works with the phasing for the building itself in that you can, I assume that McCown Gordon's looking at, you would build the two-story building first and then move everybody over and then you're doing the demo and the, the West Campus and the uh, competition gym is the last is on the back end of the schedule yep. how now given that you're doing that and when is the district office and the IT and everything being done because that's more on that side of the the campus the you know western half 
you know, do we have to, are we looking at a temporary district office or what's that, how's that demo? So district office, if you see that white box right in front of the teal, like look at the teal arrow shape, move right down from it. Okay. There's green overlay over. So to me, that would be like a a window of still being able to use that if we said there's nowhere else for them to put those spaces. IT, however, is in the church, and we're going to load that right over. It's right. Yeah, that's. So that so the spaces that are in IT will that or spaces that are in the church would have to be relocated at this you know day one before day one. So you're locating IT and local music. IT. Right, and, and we talked to Forrest it. about that, and he thinks I mean, it's a doable situation with maybe using some middle school space? Oh yeah, yeah, I think so for my server and stuff I can move to the middle school. I've got plenty of room in there. Now are you gonna miss the flooding in the basement there? <laughs> miss it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it'll take some getting used to Yeah, uh, getting used to a dry space. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of technicalities that probably got to be worked out. You explored. I mean, there's a lot of options. This is a square foot. What, what I want is the line. The point of my question, the, this line, is just to see if there's any gaps in the numbers, and that we have that we have the flexibility as the situation develops to to have the money to be able to go one way or the other, okay. right? So. What I can tell you on that, because um, I can't guarantee you that something will come up that we don't have the. Oh, it'll come up. <laughs> we know that. But remember that we talk in project costs, we've got 25% um, soft costs, mm -hmm. which includes contingencies, and we also include an escalation to figure for when we're starting. So um, there's a, and then on top of that, so the way that I have a soft cost on these dollars, we have a similar thing that we use for our square footage as well, we use grossing factor on that to account for um, inefficient spaces or as we want to kind of move them around on the site has to be further out longer corridor and some things like that. So we have what I would say is a responsible amount of like um, cushion <laughs> in both of those pots. So that right. we can get down the road in design and feel comfortable that we can do the right thing we want to do without having to feel like I don't have money to do that. Yeah, and yeah, what I'm talking about is just known unknowns, you know. Yeah. That would be good to keep for the unknown unknowns. I mean, the, will there be a point where I guess, I mean, that exercise I know that we did kind of help lay out the priorities, and it's pretty, I, mean, I don't think you can find anybody that can't agree that, that 46.4 or whatever is absolute has to be needed, but then, it, I mean, we kind of put everything into some sort of priority order after we move. Barney, us voting on this can approve by the state. I mean, will there be a session with the board or is it administration to lay out all those prior nor priorities, a little more finer detail? So as we move through this process, you know, where are we, what what gets, if you run into them for seeing what gets cut or trimmed and all that stuff? So yeah, I mean, that's part of our entire really intense design process, right? Is every step along the way, the town's working like side by side with us. And as we're going down the route, and if a hurricane hits, is an obvious easy one. Hurricane hits and prices all skyrocket, we're going to be talking about potential cuts in scope. So I would say, so when you ask about when that happens, bond pass as we start into design. All the way through that, we're doing checks with McCallum about are we staying on budget? And if not, how, what do we do to monitor the massage and get, up, get back in where we need to be? So I would tell you that will happen throughout the entire Asking multiple times, sorry. That's okay. The parking and the flow of traffic, I think, is a really important factor. Um, so I, I'm a little bit concerned about where the community would come in and park if that was used as a rec center on the backside. Looks like a very narrow space that they would go and park behind. And isn't that where the buses plan to be parked behind the building? So I, I maybe just like a little clarification on how will that work as far as the community? <coughs> So there was a lot of discussions about a, a more expansive parking area for the rec center. And I think district and rec all recognize that that would be a lot of extra cost to something that potentially couldn't be as valuable to whoever was to use that space. So right now what we've talked about, we've accommodated, you see that tiny little white like square kind of box that 
the very right corner. That's um, getting them access from, so if you only wanted them to park on this north, this upper one where the buses are doing the loop, that could be, you could say they park here and then they can take the sidewalk down either to the upper level entrance or take that walkway and that would be an ADA access down to the gym. So there is a possibility it is further walking. That is quite a walk for those that might be, a senior citizen that might come to an walk. event there, that's quite a walk for them to, <laughs> To take <laughs> the other side. <laughs> yeah. And so, what we could do, I mean, the great thing about this plan is the striping could address a lot of those concerns. So, if you were to say, and like I mentioned before, we have excess space back there for buses right now. So, if we wanted to say, we got we got locked in, we know the dis that the community's going to use it and they need to accommodate X cars, we could work that out with some striping to get parking. And maybe it's not all the spots, maybe it's three or four handicap spots or something like that to accommodate their, their needs. So I might be wrong, but if you got to that point where you knew that it was going to be used for the rec and we knew that we need to address the parking, could you shave off a little bit of blacktop on the back, like by that little shed back there, and take that blacktop strip and put it on the west side of the west building so that people would park over there? So that's where, the, that's what the uh, rec commission was kind of asking about. You're saying on like on the on the loop. Yeah. On um, yeah, on <coughs> the right side, the west of the west building. So not being from the town, but uh, what I can tell you, I think they would say is those aren't like even dollars for dollars. Okay. Because you're doing, you're having to prep a whole brand new. You have a new base. A oh, yeah. brand new area rather than just extending the area that you have. That's why I would recommend trying to keep it within the space we have, and maybe doing some restriping. Now, not to say that it, you, did, you know, the district used found value in adjusting some of the paving, we move it around. So. so flow of traffic as they come in, it looks like the buses you plan on the, by the west campus, so all other cars come in on the east side. Mm -hmm. And then, where, so is it the parents would drive around, like if you're dropping off your freshmen or yep. your grounded sophomore or something like that? <laughs> And then can you either turn left and go out or can turn right and go out the back access? That's right. So the district could come up that area or whatever they decide they want it to be a certain way. And then I think, I think Josh kind of made a joke that teachers park where we want to park, but that south area could be um, designated just for teachers if we wanted to be able to do that. The road is, a, it's a full, it's not just a one way, it's a That's right. two lane road mm -hmm. in and out. Yep. That's a new road too, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, that. <laughs> It's getting way too prime in the weeds, but I mean, you could make that rec people get, if people went to the rec and they went in the back way, they could they get access and they don't have to go in between the buildings and all that different stuff. Yep, definitely designated area back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. Is there any other broad curtain? Yeah, uh, so on the we're getting rid of the oldest part of, of the school, which is probably helps this, but the on the fire code, um, you know, truck access and that kind of stuff, uh, upgrades. I mean, that's all been yes. evaluated as mm -hmm. part of your walkthroughs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So we would include uh, sprinkling the existing buildings that don't have sprinkling, just in in uh, preparation for the city to require that. We don't know for sure that they would. Uh, we would include. And then, yeah, as far as access around the building, I think Josh talked through that with the city when he met the other day. Okay. Yeah. Is there any kind of lighting in these parking lots? Yes. Yep, so we would, or we would figure for LED fixtures, kind of that standard lengths and width. And the paving thickness is what? Uh, <laughs> I'm not the right person to ask, but I can. I'm only that. asking. Because <laughs> we opened a new building and we're not very successful at parking lot. Here you go. Over there. Over there. So we always start with the, so I will tell you this, it's not gonna be the same throughout the entire site. So as it's shown right here, if we have an area that's gonna be accommodating bus traffic, it's going to be a thicker section because of the heavier, obviously, because of the heavier loads. Whereas you don't wanna pay for a thicker section over here where it's going to be car traffic. Okay, what about but snow removal? 
not going to wear it down like the daily use of a bus would. I mean, we can. We can put thicker pavement throughout your entire parking lot. Well, when three stall cycles are not going to be conducive to thin pavement. Well, I'm not. I don't. That's probably not the right word to use, thick and thin. It's thick and thicker. Thank you, Chris. I get, I'll get the numbers from Josh because I'm. It's a little out of my wheelhouse on what numbers he actually uses, but I do know. I was just wondering. A lot of times we use trying to use a real thick where we know we have to accommodate that heavy traffic every single day. So that would probably be that entire west, and then uh, that back lot as well. Well, I mean, you probably would have buses on the east, far side, yeah. east side, when you have the gym. athletic activities. As yep. a bus driver, my concern with, with parking thickness would be when when I drive to somebody else's school, we don't park in the bus loop. We don't Not park knowing where to go. We park you know, where the, near the competition gym so that they can go in and do what they're going to do in the competition space. So when it comes to thickness, you know, are we gonna, is it going to be thick enough that it'll stand up to when we have six or eight buses you know, for a track meet or right. for a basketball tournament or a volleyball tournament over near the competition gym because that's where those bus drivers will park. Well, is there sufficient parking over there for buses and cars if we do have? That um, seems like almost the smallest area of parking that we might have is near that competition gym. But I, mean, I guess we can utilize that whole piece. But. I mean, yeah, you actually, yeah, exactly. I think there's a back thing that would be to fill up the east and north and south sides. And it looks like everything's curb and gutter and curb and gutter islands. Yes. Is that yes. right? Yeah. If that direction you want to go. <coughs> I mean, you could run buses where they cut, you know, if you wanted to keep that separation during events, you know, you could easily have buses and people entering the back side of the building, so that maybe they still use that back area, mm -hmm. and patrons still come to the front, but then they, they would enter through a separate, a separate extra exit entrance from the south side. I mean, it could be you have some direct traffic that right. sends those buses back to where you would normally park to the thicker side, too, if you wanted to do that. I'm just yeah, that's what you do. Anything else? Um, so on a two-story building, you know, for this building, um, we have, I've, I've recently was helping out with Earth Day and was in the classroom in, in this building. And as the students walked, you could really feel the floor moving. You know, this is, yes, second grade, second graders, so they're not high schoolers, right? Um, and there's been, um, you know, the isolation of that vibration with regards to thing, uh, uh, video monitors and stuff attached to the lower, the ceiling and everything moving and, and the sound. Um, does the current budget accommodate not a code minimum, but can adequately address those things that we've Yes, so um, structurally, quite some time ago, like probably 10 years ago, we stopped, and I can't tell you what's here uh, without going and looking, I could go look at early the drawings, but we stopped using a joist system with a slab and went to beams and a composite slab, so headed, right. headed beams. So it's basically just composite action, so there is no ability for shaking. So it is a cheaper system to do uh, the system that would probably result in what you're talking about, the vibration. But we've gone away from that in schools like 10 years ago. Just because it's not, again, the issues with the people trying to use the building daily, the life bands of buildings that are educational use, we just don't use those systems anymore, so. Yeah, I know that Kai had that as a topic. Yeah, I mean, I've just heard, there's been a lot of complaints of, from the teachers that have classrooms downstairs here that if, well, I mean, a lot of complaints, I'll, I'll, my daughter who's in a classroom downstairs will tell you that it's super loud when they move the desks or they, you know, they, if they do anything where they're moving furniture or moving a cart or anything, the Promethean board shakes and the, and it's so noisy. So that's, that, I mean, that is a real concern. Yeah, and it's happening with second graders and kindergartners with 200 pound high schoolers bouncing around so I, I just wanted to make sure that the that that um, is you know conveyed 
and, and accounted for. Mm -hmm. And whatever whatever the configuration is, whether this stays like this or you switch the competition gym and the two-story learning center, mm -hmm. what was the dollar amount on relocating the utilities? Do you remember? Off the top of your head, have you had that? It was less than a million. Yeah, I think it was eight something or six. Eight, six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Um, oh, that makes me have another question. Chris, are you done with that? Was that the? Yeah. Okay. So for the relocation, um, specifically the electrical, that 600000 is that an overhead relocation? Or are you putting in underground all the way around the West Campus? Well, underground is always so I think that that would be for the aesthetics. I don't know. Money well, well spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's also for maintenance and stuff like that. That would be a lot less things to go wrong, especially if you have a high voltage line drop or something like that. So obviously, the relocation would be in consideration of that learning suite expanding That's west right. or That's right. whatever. Take them out of that corner. In the other configuration where we had the athletic gym where the yellow part is, I think you had to relocate there as well, right? Right, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I don't think there's any design that, that can be in East Campus at Consolidation that did not have that moving somewhere. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, because all that right where the church is, all that has to go away connected together. So um, it would be good in this meeting to just revisit kind of the evolution of the options and numbers because I, I think that there's um, having made most of those meetings what was encouraging was that as both the the amount that we would have to fund for a for a mill levy increase and the dollar amount for the for what ultimately ended up being the recommend, recommendation they really got because we started at a 39 million no no bond or no no mill levy increase, based upon the data as it became available and refined, that went up to over 40. And at one point in time, we were we were pushing 58, 60 plus million, and then that came back down to where we're at today. So, um, am I getting that? So you have two questions. You have one on how the price of stuff moved, and then also what the tax implication. Well, the tax implication, I think, is relatively straightforward. Okay. I mean, as data came available, the, the the no bond or the no no mill levy increase number went in the correct direction up, and um, so on the because we were at one point during meetings two or three workshop two or three. Yeah, the high end was approaching 60, is yes. that correct? Yes, it was 58. Yeah, 58. Yeah. So, you know, what, what was happening there as far as having that come back down? Well, so that was a different scale, the 58. But um, if you were to compare uh, workshop five with workshop six, the, so that image that Jake showed where it was the West Campus at like 5.5 5 million. That price tag significantly dropped because we had more detailed discussions with the district, how they would use um, that West Campus, how the community, you know, if they were to use it, would use it. And we were able to be more specific with McCown about what kinds of renovations we needed for the different parts of that building. So before when we had five and a half million, we had blanket said we'll have light, medium, heavy renovation in different parts of the building, and then assigned dollar per square foot to that and had the numbers for a rough amount. As we had more time and talked with the district about exactly how much space they needed, came to that um, floor plan that has the colored mm -hmm. spots on it, then we can get really super specific about how much dollars are there. And we were able to break that down significantly. So that's a big portion of why you know, we went from the five and a half down, because the five million that this team is proposing is for, remember, you have some work in East Building and the West Campus. Right. So it went from five and a half down to I think about four. I have to add up my numbers again. So okay. it did go down.
down with just getting more information and being able to do more Kind of doing the bare minimum on the just paint and pictures yes. and things yes. like that, and yeah, not I getting too carried away with what was that? Yeah. In well, this I think that east camp, the drop in that, and because there was five million over there to do the east campus, but I mean, I think they scaled back to kind of just basic renovate. I hate to use the word basic, but then there's some of all of those classrooms we're not touching at this point in time because they don't have a purpose. I mean, I mean, it's trying to best allocate the dollars that we have. Trying to do it right, but yet make the best financial decision there is, mm -hmm. what it appeared to be. And During this build a school exercise, one of the tables um, worked on trying to come up with a no tax increase yeah. answer. And as they went through it, they they came out right at about 41 million, which you'll see is right where the, the blue, uh, light blue one is here. Um, that represented the no tax increase, and so their little colored cards that they could fit into that. Um, basically did not the school. Yeah, that was, that was the answer. That was their, uh, what did you guys learn of this? Well, we wouldn't have a functioning school. Well, I mean, I think it's been a pretty good process. It's evolved considerably, I think, from when we started. I mean, I don't think anyone envisioned the dollar amount would be quite where it is, but I think we reckon, personally anyway, I, rec I think the need is there based on the meetings, and we've got to a pretty solid number. I think there's a lot of specific details we got to work out. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know if everyone here, I'm personally, I'm prepared, I guess, to take action on this, because I think you know, I think point, part of the point that we're having our meeting now is given the limited funds at the state is so that we can get in line first at the state I and mean, we got to get approved with them before we even go to the voters. Um, but it is a, it's a big decision, so I hate, I, don't, I hate to cut off questions, but I do think we got to kind of come to grasp if we're going forward or not going forward. It seems like we've gotten to the dollar ballpark of where we need to be to make everything happen based on the process. Um, so, is there any other? Ultimately, in our minds, as the, as the vision team um, going through this process, yes, we could do something for less, but the end result on that is five years from now, we're gonna be right back in this room again, asking for more money. And so, as we talked about, when we, when we put this together with the people that were in that room, and with these folks that came represented, uh, and with folks from you know, the, the super and the assistant super and some of you guys that were there at those meetings, ultimately what we've come up with here we feel like is the best value for the dollar. It's the best way that we can uh, improve our educational process, not only for now, but in the future, and put us in a position to not have to do this again for another 15 or 16 years, perhaps, at least at the high school level, so. Is there any other questions from the board members? No, I, I mean, at this point, I think my questions have been answered. Um, and my only um, desire at this point going forward is um, to work on a strategic master plan to, to look forward the 10, actually, this Dustin was helping us look forward up to, I think, 25, 26 years. And there's a lot of assumptions that you um, have to choose in different scenarios to do that and depending upon how the growth of the district um, and goes both on the enrollment side as well as the valuation side there's scenarios where up until 2045 if, if this growth is slightly lower than it has been over the last um, 10 years then there's no additional work to do if it if it accelerates, then there is some work that has to be done in, you know, 10 to 20 years. And understanding what those scenarios look like and having some dollars to, um, put towards that so that we can plan ahead for that and understand what the trigger points are for that so that as we up start to approach it, um, you know, because at this point in time, 20 years out is 
very, very difficult to, um, to predict. And what we were also looking at was a, um, you know, pretty conservative on state aid out that far. Um, it has in the past been over 40 and we're projecting, you know, less than we have today, which is on a downward trend. So we're being conservative there. Um, but I do think that going forward, it would be good to, um, over the next year or so, to start to pull something like that together, um, probably in an operation side of things, a maintenance uh, approach that Lauren is already working on, and then and then a capital um, construction type plan as far as square footage for all three all three buildings. I mean, I think that's a great. I mean, Peter's going to share some of these concerns and stuff with me already, and I think put a lot of thought and effort into some things. And there's been other discussions that have come out of this process about the planning process in the future. And I think this has been I mean, the whole exercise has been. A, Seems to be a good process for us. Um, so, I wanted to add that to our Thank future you. agenda. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, well, we no, have a we have a we have a break right. here before no, we start so the night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he gave us a year to get on the agenda. <laughs> anyway, but, well, without any further questions of us, we'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you have knee lock. Thanks for keeping us standing the whole time. Yeah. With that, I guess I would entertain a, a motion on how we proceed on this project. Okay. I move to approve a resolution authorizing and providing for the calling of a bond election in Unified School District number 464, Leavenworth County, Kansas, Tonganoxy, for the purpose of submitting to the qualified electors of the district the question of issuing general obligation bonds of the district authorizing application to the State Board of Education for the authority to call the bond election and for capital improvement state aid and providing for the giving of notice of the bond election. Is there a second? I second. I mean, I do have a question. Do we have to, do we need to spell out the dollar amount in our resolution? I mean, you submitted the, the uh, stuff that was in the packet spelled out. No, just, I think you're just reading that one paragraph on the very front page of the packet, I believe, that's what you're reading. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions or discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor? Did I, you got a second, right? Yeah, yes. Second. Second. All right. All in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone, for your time and effort. With that, I move we adjourn. Thank, oh, thank you guys for your time. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thanks for coming to all the meetings. The fun's just beginning. You open on Tuesday nights. <laughs> oh, well, we got something for you, Carl. Jake, thank you. Thank you guys very much. Amber does a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.